This video is going to be about the R library, D plier. At least that's how I say those letters strung together. D, P, L, Y, R, all lowercase. I say D plier. I don't know what other people say, to be honest. D plier will be good enough for us. D plier is a crucial library to the world of R. Uh, its fame really rests on maybe five functions, but for us, in the immediate, the most important of dplyr's functions are group by, filter, and summarize. We will get to other functions of the library dplyr eventually in this class, but for now, this video is just going to focus on these three. First, I will go over some quick definitions of these functions just so we know what's going to come at us in the examples, or at least have a better idea of it. So, group by groups a data frame by levels of a categorical variable. By itself, grouping a data frame by the levels of a categorical variable is actually pretty useless, but together with these other functions, grouping by a categorical variable is incredibly helpful. Filtering, on the other hand, keeps observations based on a condition. And you get to specify the condition. So you can say, like, keep all the observations. Remember, observations are rows. Keep all the observations in my data set where the animal weighs more than, I don't know, 200 pounds. What you got to remember is filter keeps specific observations. And I'll show you how to set some of those conditions in the examples to come. I'll show you some of the more interesting ones, I think, at least. The function summarize uh, helps you calculate summary statistics. Uh, still learning how to spell here, people. Spelling mistakes happen. OK, here we go. Summary statistics. Oh, good. Summary statistics by groups specified by by group, if any exist. So summary uh, helps us create summary statistics. That is, if you're interested in like a mean, it's going to collapse all those observations, however many numbers you have, into one new number, the sample mean. So summarize is really collapsing across observations within each group. I know that's a little difficult at first, but I think you'll get a good feel for this with an example in R. So I'm going to increase the screen size. And actually, you know what? I'm going to use a new data set. So over here in my GitHub repository named data, I'm going to go down to the data set Carnivora. And I'll let you read about the data set itself in the text file. And for now, I'm just going to jump straight into, no, you know what? It's going to be helpful to look at it. Carnivora is a data set um, taken from Gittleman that includes two morphological variables, body and brain sizes, and eight life history trait variables and four taxonomic variables. It's a data set about things uh, in the order carnivora. So this is a data set with 112 observations of animals in the order carnivora and 17 variables. We're going to be interested in female body weight. I'm only really picking female body weight because it doesn't have any missing data in it. The rest of these variables might have missing observations. It's on you to find out when that happens. So the readme, the help file itself doesn't help us obtain the data set because I haven't gotten to that point yet. So I'm going to click on the CSV itself. And then over here on the right, I'm going to click on raw. 
Then I'm going to get the URL for this raw CSV file and Control C or Command C, depending on if you're on a Windows or Mac, respectively. And over here in R, I'm going to type out the name I want that data frame to have, read.csv, then in parentheses and in quotes, I'm going to paste with Control or Command V so that I can read in that data frame of interest. So let's see, carnivora. If we just look at the order, there's only one level to the categorical variable order because all of these animals are from the order carnivora. On the other hand, if you look at the categorical variable superfamily, there are two levels to say that all the animals from the order carnivora are either dog-like or cat-like, respectively, things. So I'm going to focus on these two levels because I think it's going to be easy for us to maintain in our brain dog-like, caniformia, and cat-like, feliformia, things as we go. So to work with the library dplyr, you should load it first. And at this point in the course, you all should have this installed on your machines. If you don't, go over here to Packages, and type out, uh, and then click install, and then type out dplyr, and you can install it from there. Once you have it installed and loaded, the best way to use the library dplyr is almost like you're building a sentence where your sentence always starts with the data frame of interest. You should read, take the data frame carnivora, and then, and in R, the symbol, see if I can zoom in on it for you. The symbol percent greater than percent is how I'm going to read and then in R. So take the data frame carnivora and then group by superfamily. And as long as you spell superfamily right, everything should work out. And you see what you get out is basically another data frame where it tells you this data frame is grouped by superfamily, and superfamily has two levels, caniformia, dog-like, and feliformia, cat-like, animals. So as I said earlier, group by by itself does not really do anything particularly interesting. What's interesting is if you take your data frame this entire thing now is one data frame that has been grouped by the levels of superfamily. If you take this one data frame and you continue to pass on things here after. So it's as if you're saying, take the data frame carnivora and then group it by superfamily and then summarize it by calculating the mean of female body weight of animals within each of those superfamilies. So this turns out to be really helpful. You get out a new data frame where you have one variable that's helping you group this new data frame and one variable that is the output of your calculations of interest. Notice mu hat here is my choice of name. So I have calculated the mean of female body weights for each level of the categorical variable superfamily. So it appears that, let me just double check. Yep, FW, female body weight in kilograms. Okay, good check. It appears that animals from the superfamily Caniformia have at least a greater mean kilograms per body weight for the females than do females from the superfamily Feliformia, which has a mean of basically 15 kilograms. That's quite interesting. It seems that dog-like things and cat-like things have different body weights for the females. And remember, this is like out in the wild. This isn't necessarily for 
uh, domesticated cats and dogs. Okay, let's try that function filter next. So take your data frame carnivora and then filter by keeping any rows with the family that are equal to, and I'm going to pick out prosionidae. Let's see if that works. Ah, that does work. Prosionidae, or however you say that, <laughs> is the family of raccoon-like things. So what I'm doing here is taking the data frame carnivora and then keeping with the function filter all of the rows where family is equal to, and in order to specify is equal to, you need two equal signs, where family is equal to this family name, which includes raccoon-like things. And you see the data frame we get out consists of only four observations and only the family Procyonidae. Again, I don't know how to pronounce it, but I do like raccoons. So filter here keeps based on the condition you specify. Now, oftentimes the first question I'm asked is, how do I keep rows based on two levels? Well, what you need for that is this fancy operator that you can just read as in. And you want to ask for all the levels of family that are in, and then you need to specify a vector. And don't forget this added right parenthesis. See how it's highlighting the second right parenthesis is closing that one? Without that, it will be an error in R. And so if you run these two lines of code, uh, this one line of code, you will see you'll get these two families. You'll get all the rows of carnivora for which family is either Procyonidae, here are the first four we found earlier, or Mustelidae, here are the next observations for which family is a, I believe that's weasels and such. Mustelidae I think is weasels, but I'll let you Google it on your own. So here is our new data set, which consists of only 34 rows of the original 112 rows. It's a subset of the original data set because we decided to keep only the observations where family is in this vector. And we specified these two levels of the categorical variable family. Now, you can string all of this code together in the world of, let's just cheat. You could string all of this code together in the world of dplyr. So let's take our data set and then filter by family such that we're only looking at raccoon and weasel-like things, and then group by super, group by family, so we'll essentially just group by these two levels and then summarize by calculating a mean of FW. And look, you can even do greater than this. Let's calculate our sample size. I know there's no missing data, so I'm going to cheat and use a function named little n, which takes no arguments, and it'll calculate our sample size for us within each group of Mustelidae and Procyonidae. And you can even do as many other calculations as you want here inside Summarize. And look what we get out. We get out one new data frame that's grouped by the two levels that we filtered down to. And then there's one new column for each variable we specified with the names as we specified, including sigma, which should have been sigma hat, but you can see my typo gets carried through because that's what I incorrectly specified. And then here's your new data frame. Here is a mean, a sample size, and an 
estimate of the population standard deviation for all weasel-like things. And here is a mean, a sample mean, a sample size, and a sample standard deviation for all raccoon-like things. Now, the only last hint I'm going to give to you in the world of dplyr is this sort of code looks very messy by the time you're done saying take a data frame and then filter it and then group it and then summarize it. So I'm just going to copy it up here and I'm going to show you a trick I like to do. Just after and then, I like to hit enter. So that filter, its own step shows up on its own line. And down here, just after and then, put group by on its own line. And then just after and then, put summarize on its own line. Now look, this is almost like a sentence where each verb shows up on its own line. You start with the noun, your data frame, and then you filter it, and then you group it, and then you summarize it. And I think that is much more legible than having it all show up on one line. If you want to help summarize be more legible, split it up after the commas. That is also helpful to the eye such that you can read this code a little bit better. So let's give you as a final image on this screen, all the code we just learned in this lecture. There we go. If you want to use the library dplyr, that is, and then, filter, group by, or summarize, you got to load the library first. Here's the data set we used, and here's some fancy uh, calculations of statistics for only these two levels, grouped by those two levels, and then summarized to have a sample mean, a sample size, and a sample standard deviation.